the dark world of churches 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 prosperity gospel scam in this modern era you said that you don't like to fly commercial because you don't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. We wrestle not with flesh and blood. I can believe God as long as I want to. If I want to believe God for a $65 million plane, you cannot stop me you cannot stop me from dreaming and the madness continues praise the lord hallelujah yeah what what hallelujah amen prosperity gospel is a doctrine in global pentecostal charismatic movement which is anchored in the belief that financial blessings and physical well-being such as good health are always the will of God. And for you to access material wealth, you need to donate to religious causes. In other words, you need to plant the seed in church. I don't have a problem with giving. I don't have a problem with receiving. The prosperity gospel has been in existence for quite some time. It first came to limelight in 1950s during the healing revivals that were championed by preachers like William Braham, Oral Roberts, among others. With some key pioneers passing on, the prosperity gospel evangelism declined in the 1960s and 1970s before resurfacing with a bang for good in the 1980s. Conveniently so because the 1980s provided perfect timing and the right ecosystem owing to three enablers. First, televangelism opportunities Advancements in television, broadcasting, recording technologies allowed for TV commercials and radio adverts to be recorded and broadcasted to millions of people more easily. This meant that churches had the golden opportunity to grow audiences worldwide much, much faster. Secondly, identification of a new disease. A strange disease was spreading like wildfire in the 1980s. Scientists were rushing against time to understand the disease, how solid documentation of its origin and prognosis, and hopefully discover a treatment for it. It was when cases of the human immunodeficiency virus disease HIV were being correctly diagnosed and deaths relating to acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, AIDS, were being aggregated and reported. These provided preachers with a new fear factor to advance their religious doctrines and personal interests through riding on people's health-related fears. And the third enabler was the invention of mobile phones. Portable mobile phones were invented from mid-1980s, spearheaded by the Motorola Corporation, which developed the Motorola Dynatac. Such inventions meant that real-time voice and text communication was a reality. Savvy preachers started rethinking and repackaging their Christianity messaging to ensure that their messaging was precise and impactful, both religiously and financially. 
this trend continued into the 1990s with advancements in live TV programming, computer systems, takeoff of the internet, and increased penetration of mobile phone, it was inevitable that prominence of prosperity gospel had grown worldwide. It was the to-go-to cash cow for churches and entrepreneurial preachers who propelled the health and wealth gospel. Then, the 21st century cemented the blowing up of the prosperity gospel in all corners of the world. It became a priority evocation in all sermons. Not even funerals were spared. It became a lifestyle. A good number of pastors and bishops out there realized that to enhance the outcomes of evoking the prosperity gospel, that is them getting more money from their congregations in the name of the nations and planting seed, they themselves had to take it a notch higher by showing their audience what they are missing, by showing their audience what they should aspire to be by showing their audience what success looks like. Preachers embraced public display and flaunting of material wealth and even started using those in their sermons as evidence of God's will. To date, the poor are bankrolling rich preachers' luxurious lifestyles because the gospel they are preached to regularly is very, very touching. And it keeps reminding them that they have to give money to church for God to even remotely think of blessing them with good health and wealth. Sadly, this madness has become a normal thing. But let us take a step back and analyze this complex conundrum. Why is the prosperity gospel so effective despite a lot of people out there thinking that they're getting conned or even some being certain that they're being conned they still fall for the same trap over and over it all comes down to three things first how the human mind is wired to receive to anticipate rewards secondly how we most likely behave in the face of adversity and long-term challenges and thirdly preachers knowledge of all these and how they manipulate people's minds to their advantage you see our minds are wired to perceive anticipated rewards with very very high regard with that we naturally evoke emotions around eagerness optimism self-assurance valor just to mention a few with these emotions in place it is inevitable that the intended behavior and consequences kick in big time for example if i was told that i need to donate a thousand us dollars and shown the possibility that i can be able to get one million dollars worth of worldly blessings in return 
as reward, I will do just that. Or even, I will voluntarily donate more than a thousand US dollars in the hope that I will get over one million US dollars worth of worldly blessings. Unfortunately, many people don't consciously know and appreciate that human appetites are insatiable and challenges will never come to an end because the finish line of addressing an old challenge is the starting line of problem solving for a new challenge. Conversely, the proponents of prosperity gospel know all these. That's why they manipulate you to donate, to give, to plant the seed without thinking that you are getting robbed. What's more stunning is that the more you plant the seed, the deeper and deeper you get into hysteria of believing, of visualizing, of speaking to the fact that all the worldly blessings are yours in waiting. Unfortunately, some will never wake up from this hysteria until they die. As I look to conclude, kindly remember that not all churches are bad. Not all Christian denominations are bad. In fact, some mainstream factions have opposed the prosperity gospel, terming it heretical. When it's all said and done, someone's conviction is unique to them, based on one's view of life, innate fears, and someone's situation. We are all free to choose and practice what we think is good for us and for those we care about. Many thanks for watching this video. My name is Afagza Sifuna. As always, it has been a pleasure to provoke the creative juices in you and to open your eyes to what is happening in this world of ours.